first thing that I ever played that I improvised to on the bass was, was this doo-wop. pianist who I was playing with he was just like jamming you know I was just having a blast. We we would like do this for for like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and then we go on to another type of feel. Um, and I had I had something to hang my hat on because I knew a bass line that functioned within a form, um, and that particular bass line functioned in the blues. And with that, you know, I was able to. I was able to supply something that I knew and the, the solos could play over it. Um, so, you know, I'd be lying to you if I said like, you know, I just, I just improvised without any science <laughs> whatsoever. Um, and, and I realized like watching that video again, um, you know, some of it comes across like that. Like I'm just basically saying improvise guys, you know, just use your intuition. But I think, I think the one thing that, that, you know, the one building block there is just that simple song, which is Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. That, by the way, is there anyone who didn't know Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star? We all knew it, right? I mean, like even my kids, you know, like your ABCs is Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, right? So you learn that so early on. Like my two and a half year old is, is singing his ABCs constantly. Um, he just doesn't know that that's Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <laughs> um, but it's the same melody. So, so that's sort of like just using that intuition and then building upon that into then understanding a little theory that gives you, you know, it should give you some more of a security blanket then to, to springboard off of. But I think it's like, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of times I think of myself as this ping pong ball. And one side of the net, one player is the science, the theory. And the other side of the net is this intuition person. And they keep on, you know, hitting me back and forth across the ping pong table over the net. Sometimes I get stuck and I don't get to the other side, <laughs> you know. And so like the science of me being that ping pong ball is like, oh, the science didn't quite get me over to the intuition. <laughs> so then the science has to like, you know, hit it again. Or, you know, that's like just you switch the, you know, every five serves, you switch it. So I'm going to get a chance to go back to the intuitive side. And then the intuitive side may not get me across the net. But then eventually there's like a nice volley going on. And that's when I'm starting to like find a balance. Uh, and um, so it really is this kind of like bouncing back and forth between that intuition and the science to give you, you know, something to have. But before like I say too much and everything, I'm just curious if there's any specific questions based on anything that was just presented. Like, is there anything that you need clarification on or, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. Um, so I'm not a bass player. Um, one thing that's always fascinated me about, uh, especially uh, jazz bass playing is the walking bass line. Like, how do you know where to go? <laughs> and I'm a pretty, you know, well-rounded musician. And like, I still don't know how you would do that on the spot. It's a mystery to me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, I remember when going just back to the blues, since that's, you know, the, the beginning of my development as a, as a jazz bass player. Um, I remember coming home and walking bass lines uh, and my mom, who's a classical musician, would walk into the room that I was practicing in. And I'd be playing something like this. I'd be like... And, 
she'd come in and she'd say, you know, I just want to know in jazz walking bass lines, do you guys shape your lines ever? And I remember feeling like really sort of like antagonized by her. And I said, yeah, of course we shape. What do you mean? Yeah, we shape our music. I don't know what you're talking about. And then I said, what's, what's shaping? <laughs> and she said, you know, like phrasing to the bar line or using dynamics. And I remember her, she left the room and I was just like, man, she got me like, ah. Oh. I know what she's talking about. And I started to play it more like this. Music making just started to come out of me um, because it was like it was like okay, and I'm sure this didn't happen immediately, but it was like a lot of questions started to happen. Like you know where where am I going? What is the reason for me to provide this baseline? What am I actually trying to accomplish? And I've always found like a lot of like questions generally answer what my true goals are. You know, it's like you know the, a lot of simple questions, like a lot of fundamental things. But then to get even more specific into your question, a lot of times, you know, if you take the blues, you have this, generally speaking, you have this four measure phrases built into 12 measures. And you could start as like rudimentary as phrasing to the fifth measure, phrasing to the ninth measure, and then phrasing back to one again. So it would sound like... So now we're home again. So there's just like some, I guess like some, initially there's some music, basic music skills. But then I, I kind of feel like, and Kenny, correct me if I'm wrong, but you might also be talking about like the chord changes and sort of, is that what you mean? Yeah. And like just navigating from chord to chord. I mean, obviously you got standards like, you know, three, six, two, five, ones at the end of phrases and things like that. But like, you know, how do you make that choice? Like, I mean, because there's so many options that you can, you know, land on. Or like head, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. Maybe it's just like an artistic thing or... No, uh, I'm laughing because you're so right. Like, <laughs> like there's, there's, I remember I was at this program called Jazz in July in high school. It was Dr. Billy Taylor's program. Uh, and he had a guitarist there who's super famous and his name's <laughs> slipping my mind. Um, and he was an old school guitarist who played with so many heavy hitters. And he didn't really talk all that much. And I, honestly, he kind of scared me uh, because there were, <laughs> there were a lot of vibes that, you know, it's like, you know, if you're going to if you're going to come over and play with me, you better know what you're doing. You know, <laughs> and I, I had this audacity to like be like, hey, can I jam with you? And uh, we started to play. He's like, just keep up. And he started to play. He didn't count off. He just started jamming. And um, we must have played like for 15 minutes and played through. I don't know, 300 choruses. And at the end of the whole thing, and he kept on reharmonizing everything, okay? <laughs> at the end of the whole thing, I said, wow, that was fun. What was that song? And he said, it's the blues, man. <laughs> but it like sounded like this.
know? And I was just like, okay. <laughs> and I, you know, at times I was just like. <laughs> Hanging, hanging on by a thread but you know so you have like encounters that are just so far out and so you know it's like wow that was amazing i have no idea what happened but then you're going to search and quest for like what happened and probably ask a few of the guys students what what actually was going on and then it's as simple as you know going going back to like just what are the root notes you know And then eventually, you know, you add the third. And then the fifth. seventh the scales you know and it just becomes a search and it you know again I, I i would be i wouldn't be telling i wouldn't be giving you the truth serum if i didn't tell you know everybody here that it was it was building blocks you know and eventually do you ever see forrest gump uh forrest is is wearing his magic boots his magic shoes and all of a sudden, you know, he's getting bullied and he starts to run. And then all of a sudden he's running. He's 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 getting a touchdown on the football field because he's so fast. Like to me, a lot of that is the walking, you know, with the way I learned the chords, which is, you know, it, it's basically those all those cliche things, you know, learn to crawl before you walk, before you, tr you know, before you run. And eventually, just the more you do it, just like anything, it's it's it starts to just open up and become so much more intuitive. Yeah, one of the th one of the things I remember from high school um, jazz bands, like you know, jazz band one, is uh, he the our our band director would have us, uh, you know, each person like take a solo, but it was very remedial to start. Like we would just be outlining the chords, like you know, as you go through the changes, like play the 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 chords for each one. Just out play the arpeggio. Like if you can't think of anything, let's just start there. And it was actually that's I I think for students that's a really great place to start. Because it really familiarizes you, you you're familiarize yourself with exactly what the core changes are, and you're like, because it's really easy, and I don't I don't want to like take away from anything you're gonna say. It's e really easy to, to just start playing the blues over everything because <laughs> it pretty much fits over anything, you know. Um, so, but if you're following the chord change, it's a little, it's it's a lot different. Like you have a lot more variety, and like the melody actually goes somewhere rather than staying in that like blues like sound, you know. Um, so. I would just I would recommend that for sure. It was it was it was great for me um, to start that way. Yeah, and I had the you know I had the pleasure. I wanted to make sure this video was like you know, like a good video for everybody. And I I shared this with some colleagues um, earlier in the week to get some feedback. And one of the comments that I got back was um, from Hal Robinson, who plays in the Philadelphia Orchestra, but he also can improvise and play jazz and play these other styles. He um he said you know the only thing I would say is you didn't really talk about a lot about feel and rhythm, in that and that's such a like huge part of any music, um, and because you know he was he was saying you know when I when I go to play there there is always a, a sense of feel and um and I remember like the very first thing that hooked me in. Um, as a you know listening to a jazz bass player was the bassist by the name of Ray Brown the legendary Ray Brown um, he was married to Ella Fitzgerald for a lot of his life he played with Oscar Peterson one of the most amazing quintessential bebop pianists um, straight ahead piano players and one incredible sort of like bebop and hard bop uh, jazz drummers after the next and he Ray Brown just saw four four as two and four, you know, like he he just loved to give you that joyous feeling, 
which was, you know, mm, two, um, two, three. And it's it's really hard. And that's, by the way, that's like such a Philly tradition when it comes to jazz and growing up here and playing jazz. Like we, we could always hang our hat on a, on a song, no matter where it was, how fast it was or how slow it was to just have that feeling. But, you know, you go to some other places um, like I remember when I moved to New York and the two and the four was kind of like not the cool thing to do. You know, it wasn't like the in thing, you know, like like playing straight quarters and letting and let, and having it so there was more i guess flexibility of over the bar line stuff and i remember when i started to learn that style and then i came back to philly and i played with mickey roker <laughs> and mr roker who was this other incredible legendary jazz drummer like he stopped me after three songs and he said son that is not how we play here <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I was just like, but Mr. Roker, there's all these cool things that I'm learning. He said, nope, I'm sorry. That's not what we do, you know. And so it's just it's different places. But the feel is something that you do discuss and debate and, you know, and, and look for because that's, that's where so many of the goosebumps come. Um, and that bleeds over to classical music, of course, you know, with whether it's a waltz or, I mean, like Mozart has a groove. You know, Beethoven has a groove. Um, it's true. So it's anyhow, I'm, I'm sort of all over the place right now. I, I don't know. I don't know, you know, if there's anything. Let me ask you this. Is there anything about what I was talking about in that video that was unclear or caused confusion in any way? And I won't my feelings will not be hurt, by the way. Yes. Um, it's not that it wasn't clear, but it was just something that I thought of. Um, so do you think it's more beneficial to practice impro improvising with scales like you did or with chords? So one of the things about that video is it's, I, I, I wanted to do things like accompany myself and, you know, get on the piano and so, show some things. But then I was thinking, oh, by the way, does anybody here play a chordal instrument? Are we all linear players? And what, let's actually just go around. So let's see. Am I pronouncing your, Serrano, is that how you pronounce your name? Serrano. Serrano, beautiful. How, how do you, how do you, how do you, what instrument do you play? I play the violin and the piano. Violin and the piano. And is, uh, do you have an instrument that you gravitate towards more? No, uh, I like them equally. Equally, that's awesome. And then Patricia, what do you play? Um, I'm a violinist, but I had to have some experience playing guitar and piano. Awesome. So you also have um, chordal instruments, harmonic instruments. And is it, is it a, I'm sorry, the font is small. Yosef or Joseph? Uh, it's just Joseph. I play the trombone, just one instrument. Right on. All right, cool. And, uh, and Christopher? Uh, I play the flute and a piccolo. Cool. Very cool. And what does Molly play? Molly grew up playing cello, but now she plays the development director. <laughs> <laughs> right At on. on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I, I play piano too. I grew up playing, but I'm terribly out of practice. Same. I play piano as well. Very cool. So this, this video was like, you know, intro to improvisation, very geared towards that, right? Like the 101, like the first, you know, like a first launch out, something that would break the ice. But I but I think like, you know, in the follow-ups, um, for sure, I mean, playing with people and improv, improvising with people is, I think, so crucial to all of this. And I was actually even thinking like in other, in other videos to come that I might make, like I'd probably supply you with things like, um, you know, uh, uh, even if it was in Twinkle, you know, you know, you 
know, I'd be like, I'd be giving you some sort of a pulsation like that, or, and we'd probably even change the vibe a little bit, like, you know, where I, you know. You know, even stuff like that, just to, to make it more like regal or slow, um, and also not stay just in the you know, sort of genre of jazz too, because a lot of, a lot of the misconception for people when you say improvisation, um, especially even like in, in our music world, um, if you don't improvise um, on your instrument, um, the default is that, oh, jazz, improvisation, boom, and that's it. But there's so many other styles that improvisation exists in. Um, that are, you know, very prominent even in today's world, like, you know, fiddle music and, you know, even like a rock or pop or R&B song, you know, there'll be solos or like the, the voicings that go into that. Um, most, most of that music making actually comes from not through composed, you know, just like people that know their chords, they know, they just have, they have all these fundamental tools and they just show up and they start playing based on the song, you know. Um, and so, so there's just... Outside of classical music, improvisation happens like most of the time. Uh, I, I, I will say that I mean in the class. I don't know how much of this you know you know the students, uh, but classical music was rife with improvisation. Like you know, hundreds of years ago, uh, uh, concerto um, uh, cadenzas were all improvised back in the day. Uh, Bach did a lot of improvising on the organ. Most of his pieces that he played in his church were improvised. Um, so I mean, there's, there's, it's, it's a very heavy, um, an old tradition in classical music that's mostly been lost nowadays, which is very sad. Like you don't, uh, you don't hear people uh, improvising cadenzas to, you know, the Beethoven violin concerto or Tchaikovsky or anything like that. Like it just doesn't exist um, mostly nowadays. But just if student for the students, if you didn't know that, then it's it you should know that part. Yeah, Wabes Institute is going on right now. We're doing it. We did. We're doing it virtually instead of, and it's a full scholarship double base camp, and we're in our thirteenth year, and we just got done our third week out of four weeks um, virtually. And one of one of our great players that was playing some Bach this week um, was really trying to dive into the chords with me because she felt like she wasn't being expressive enough or she didn't have a handle on the piece and I basically just started to supply her with some accompaniment as she played her Bach and it just completely freed her up and mm -hmm. oh my gosh can you please send me a recording of you doing that and my answer to her was no <laughs> you lay down yourself playing those chords you figure out what the chords are to, to this this Bach minuet that she was playing and, and that's going to be, that's the exercise. That's really the fun because then you really start to understand the piece better. And I was doing, it was, a, it was this one. Yeah. So I was going. No, oh, sorry. You know, I was doing things like a. So then this, you know, and then even had her improvise on it. You know, so then. In tune, you know. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, you know, it just, it starts to, it just starts to create a spirit that's different. And so, yeah, that's another thing I really encourage encourage you guys to do if you if you haven't tried that yeah one of, one of my favorite things is to take a, a bach on the company cello or or a violin thing and swing it up like it's like you know like it's some jazz yeah it, it's really fun joseph i i encourage you to uh try that with some of the cello stuff it's very fun <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that's fun to do is, you know, on the movements that um, like minuet and trio movements where they have uh, a lot of repeats, right? On the repeat, you can do some fancy stuff. And that's not really out of line. No, not you know? at all. It's perfectly in line. Yeah. <laughs> it's expected. 
Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, I love that. I think that's awesome. I think. So how about the kids? Do you have any questions? Yeah, Joseph? Um, I guess a big question for me would be, how do you, do you separate like practicing just regular classical music and improvisation? Like, how do you schedule that? Or I don't know, schedule it. Do you just do it? I, no, I love that question. I think that question's awesome. Um, I think um, early on in my life, it, it did feel more separate. Um, but I don't think that that was necessarily the right or the wrong way to approach it. It was just the way that was like trapped in my mind. Um, now I look at just music as a universal language and that it's all interconnected and intertwined. And that's one of my favorite things about music is taking from one style and how it makes another style, you know, kind of all blown up and beautiful. Um, I, my practice techniques pretty much are like, I live in this pretty idealistic creative world when I'm practicing. So I, I'll give an example because somebody asked me this today where right now um, we're doing a, a chamber uh a bass chamber quartet on, on Nimrod by Elgar. And um, usually what I do when I go to practice is I go right to the things that give me uh, hurdles um, because the things that I, I can do, I'm not, I don't really have time to practice. <laughs> um, so, you know, for instance, it's a... <laughs> So if that's giving me some trouble, I, I might just start to try to free myself up a little bit. Um, I'll play it at different octaves. I might play it in different keys. Um, I remember I was taking a jazz lesson in high school with this wonderful bass player by the name of Todd Kuhlman. And he knew I played classical music and I was playing um, uh, the, uh, the trio from Beethoven 5. Um, you know, uh... And he started to ask me, he said, okay, great, great. Play that uh, uh, fifth up. And I would do it and he would play, play it a fifth up. Okay, played a fifth up, and then I then I started to really drop off. <laughs> and he said, "Go home and play that in all twelve keys. You'll you'll thank me for it later." So you know the the bleed over started to happen as early as you know like sixteen years old for me, um, and I started to make these connections. And um, and I I feel like uh, I feel like the more that I learned to connect them it was better for my playing. And I, I, you know, some of the people that I admire, like for instance, in Time for Three, um, one of my band, name, band uh, mates, his name is Charles Yang. And, you know, he'll, he'll, he's so free spirited that he'll be like working on a through composed piece, like a concerto, like a contemporary classical concerto with us. And then he gets like three minutes and all of a sudden he's just like jamming immediately or he's going back to a concerto that he has to play two weeks from now that he hasn't practiced. And it's just, it's all the same, you know, it's all one and the same. And I think that's what like I, I really, I try to aspire to be. And, and when I, when I do kind of get in this realm of not feeling like myself on my instrument, um, I, I, I try to start to figure out why that is. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, improvisations always freed me up. Other people might say improvisations always tighten me up, <laughs> you know, but like for me, it's always freed me up. So it's been a go-to to loosen up some other things that I don't feel very comfortable with. Um, so I, I would say less about like use improvisation to free you up and more it's like whatever doesn't feel super comfortable use use the comfortable things then to like accelerate your life wh whatever that may be I, I think I, I think that's a good you know a good way to go about it not the only way to go about it um, 
Actually, could we try something kind of crazy right now? Would that would you guys be up for doing something a little experimental? Is that is that all right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and this is where this is coming from. Does everybody have their instrument with them? No. Yeah. Go get your instruments, kids. <laughs> Darn it! Make me work. Christopher, what are you doing still sitting there? He's got his instrument right there. <laughs> so, do any of you ever come to your instrument when you're about to play something, and is this your demeanor? I'm just curious. For the show of hands, raise a hand. Whoever comes across their instrument like that. Okay. Sort of. We have some sort of and some yeses. So for, for me, this demeanor doesn't feel very natural. feel a little robotic when I play like that and and what I what I try to do all right what's up everybody my name is Renan and it's great to see all of you guys I'm in South Jersey right now the weather is kind of sticky it's sort of humid uh, and um, yeah I'm gonna have a nice dinner uh, we're getting some Indian food um, my wife and I after this and I'm really looking forward to it um, yeah, okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna play my bass now. Or should it maybe look more like this? All right, I can't wait for dinner. It's gonna be yummy. All right, check this out. <laughs> Is it, I mean, I probably don't even have to ask you what looks more natural to who I am. I mean, it's pretty obvious, you know? And so, so now that said, all right, um, so let's all try something. I know I asked you to get your instruments, but um, Patricia, let's just put you on the spot for a second. Can you, if possible, you don't have to stand up if the angle's weird or whatever. It would be great if you could stand up. But can you take yourself off mute? And... Can you just, you know, tell me your name, tell me where you are right now and how the weather is. Hi, I'm Patricia. I am in Northwest, Northwest Valley right now and the weather is kind of mixed. We just had um, rain a couple of hours ago. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's a little sticky here and rainy and all that stuff. Humidity is crazy. So now keep yourself off mute. Keep yourself off mute. And, um, and now just go to your instrument and play anything, but remember this demeanor that you have and this energy that you have. And you just told us how the weather was and you looked out the window. <laughs> it could just be a scale or anything. Um, or even one note, one note's cool. Wow, you have such awesome tone and intonation, and and that's that's fantastic. So now, can yeah. you, just, you just like shake it off one more time and just tell me something fun that happened today, like anything interesting that happened today. Um, well, I had my lesson today. <laughs> oh, cool! How'd it go? That's pretty well. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. So, so now pick up your instrument again and play that same scale. But remember, like exactly who you are. Think about who you are when you're going to play that scale. <laughs> Wow, 
Wow. Okay. All right. So, so Joseph, can you can you just tell us what your take is on the two ways that Patricia just played? Um, the second way, she looked like she was having more fun. I think. Yeah, that's awesome. And then Christopher, what what do you think? Um. Yeah, I agree with the second one. Christopher, since you're off mute, can you do you have your instrument on you? Yeah. Yeah. Can you just play anything on your instrument? Anything at all? Just like a, something very, very short, like two measures of something or scale or even a couple of notes, anything that you want. Wow. That was gorgeous. That was absolutely stunning. Thank stunning. Uh, let's see if we can, let's see if we can make that any better because <laughs> that was so beautiful. Um, can you now just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you are and um, I don't know, some, something that happened today, anything that happened today. Okay. Um, I'm home. It's actually sunny here. It's not raining. So yeah, it's nice, like cool air. Um, what happened today was I don't know. I was like quiet this morning, so I, was, I didn't feel like talking to anybody. And I was like writing in my journal, and then I played the flute like for like three hours. And yeah, just had fun today. All right, now just pick up your flute and with that that same energy that you just because you have great energy, you have awesome energy. Could you can you just go ahead and play anything that you want? Okay. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. It's actually making me think of Peter and the Wolf right now. It's so cool. Did you feel any different than you usually do? You seem like a pretty free player. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. Know. I guess I'm happy all the time, but I really felt like energetic and like felt. I don't know. Like I'm flying in the air. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. Thank you. Thank you for that, Serrano. Can you can you play anything at all? Just go right away. Just go into something. Um. Okay. Oh, I love that smile. That's awesome. Your smile is amazing. It's contagious. Can you can you now just uh, tell us? Tell us uh, something that happened yesterday. Is there anything that happened in the last three days that just made you crack up? It's so hard to remember things like that, but is there anything that made you crack up? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Where are you right now? I'm in my home. Yeah. And uh, have you had a nice day today? Yeah, today is good. Yeah, today's good. That's cool. Remember the way you just said today's good because you said it so sincerely. Today's good. Think about that. Now pick up your instrument one more time and just play anything that you want. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So Thank you. So, and Joseph, let's go to you now. Go ahead and just play anything you want. Same thing. Okay. Got to position myself. Ah. <laughs> Uh, 
you seem like a pretty natural improviser and and your, your demeanor is like your demeanor is very it's it seems very real when you go to pick up your trombone too so that's this is great i mean like i think what what i'm trying to you know I don't, you probably are getting the gist of this but i'm i'm, I'm sort of I guess I'm asking and encouraging you guys when you go to your instruments, I know we have like all these notes to follow or even if it's a chord structure or whatever it may be, but if you can find sort of that, that sort of inner natural feeling that each one of your magnificent personalities bring to the table and then summon that and take that into what you're doing, like transfer that energy, I think you're going to find, I hope that you're going to find that you're going to be more... Um, most of the time more regulated with like what the character is because like in order to have these human experiences we have to remember to be human I believe and if we go into this mode of you know I will play perfectly I will obey all the rhythms it starts to sound like that you know so it's kind of a it's kind of a freeing exercise so joseph long-winded way of answering your question people are scared to ask me questions because i just ramble on but long-winded way of saying that you know whatever you can use to strengthen yourself i think is a good thing um and i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily worry about the cross-pollination of like this style or that style i think ultimately if you're if you're taking that style if you're trying to bring a, your your sense of integrity to that style, then the outcome is going to most likely be extremely positive, and there will be some carryover. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other thoughts or questions? I just want to share a story with you real quick. Um, uh, you studied with Hal, and about 20 years ago, I went to a Philly Orchestra concert. And um, Nigel Kenny, Kennedy was playing the uh, Beethoven Violin Concerto, which was amazing. And after the concert, I forget what else was on the concert, um, but after the concert was over, Nigel Kennedy came out for his bows and he just started improvising and just just playing. And he stopped for a second and invited Hal to come over <laughs> and they proceeded to just destroy the stage. It was amazing have no idea what they were playing, but it was incredible. Um, so when you start talking about Hal, I just thought about that experience from, you know, decades ago, but it was, it was really great. Really great. I'm going to have to ask him about that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it was amazing. Well, with yeah. regard to your quest, oh, go ahead. Who's? I was just going to say the world was not ready for Nigel Kennedy, I think, when he came on the scene. He was one yeah. of my favorites, though, for that same reason. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah, I mean, like, I could. T I'm, I'm loving. I mean, our time together is so cool right now. I'm just, I'm loving it. I, I just feel like, I feel like we all have something to offer, and a lot of times it's about releasing ourselves to being able to offer it, um, and and sort of having the conviction to, to try it. You know, um, when when it comes to our instruments, um, working with extremes, I think, is a real positive thing. Um, so, you know, that, that can mean whatever it means to you. Um, but a lot of times, especially students will come up to me and they'll ask me, is this okay? Is this appropriate? Is this the right way to do it? Would Bach, would I be honoring Bach if I did it this way? Um, and I try to answer with the straightest face that I possibly can when I get those questions because inside I am giggling just a little bit because ultimately, you know, these are composers that we do have to study. We do have to, we do have to look up to, right? Because that's the integrity behind their music. And, you know, quite frankly, like they've gotten to a certain elk in their musicianship. That's just tremendous. But, you know, at the end of the day, it is you on stage and it is your presentation. And I think that, you know, I'm not saying that you should go play uh, Bach like it's, you know, like it's uh, romantic literature or something like that. But I think in the practice room you should because, <laughs> like, it really helps, like, you explore and find that comfort level. Um, so... And look, it, sometimes it is scary to try new things. Like we have, uh, th just this week at Wabase, there, there's there's this one wonderful, wonderful player who um, 
said she didn't audition for four years to Wabes because she heard we improvise at the beginning of every bass class. And she was deathly afraid. And she's so good. <laughs> and she's been improvising this entire program and she sounds great. But she just was scared, you know. And it's okay to be scared. I'm scared of things, you know. And fear is a good thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's a human thing. Uh, if you run into anybody ever who says, I'm scared of nothing, they're, they're probably lying. And I think that, I think ultimately, you know, it's, you know, when you have your instrument in your hands, you should feel, you should feel like you can feel safe, you know, and, and, and mostly people are going to give you that support and, and love. And if they don't, you probably should, probably should find the people that do anyhow, you know, so, um, I, uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate this opportunity guys for having me, um, on and um, I, if you have like any follow up at all, like if you have any questions about any of this stuff, if you want to send over like a video of you improvising or doing something like that, whether it's on social media or you can get my information from from anybody at Primavera, I am happy to like follow up. I think you're all so magnificently talented, and I'm I'm lucky. I'm the lucky one to get some time with you guys. So I appreciate it.